Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to talk about stall currents of DC uh, motors, the little motors that run our electric trains. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about um, what is a stall current, why are they important to you, finally, how can you safely measure a stall current without destroying the motor or doing any damage to it anyway. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm hoping my voice is going to hold out today. The pollen around here has been horrendous and um, it, it's coming and going and it will be crackly by the end, I guarantee it. But stick with me. Let's go ahead and get started now. Okay, so what then is a stall current and why is it important to you? Well, one thing about uh, motors is um, they have their own uh, individual stall currents by design, okay? And it's controlled by a couple of different factors, several different factors, uh, specifically uh, the voltage that is being applied to the motor divided by the resistance of all of these coils of wires here to the flow of electrons through it determines the stall current. Now, under most cases, when we start applying uh, power to a motor, you know, it's going to start speeding up and uh, you're going to get a slow increase in the amperage draw and the speed. As it speeds up, your amperage is going to increase. You're pushing more electrons through here in order to make it go. Okay? Now, eventually you reach a point where you max out and under certain conditions, you may see a situation where the locomotive wheels start to spin. If you've overloaded the locomotive with too many cars, or if you're going up a hill and it uh, can't go, then it might stop and just sit there and spin its wheels. And that's called a spinning stall or, or a wheel slip, any number of things like that. And at that point, you can get a very high amperage uh, draw through this motor. And, you know, that one alone can be a decoder killer because it can be quite high. It can be up near the theoretical stall current. And a matter of fact, back when Lens was still selling uh, decoders and products here in the United States, they uh, were, were uh, telling their uh, purchasers, their customers, to actually uh, measure the current when the locomotive is slipping, when the wheels are slipping. And they used that to rate their decoders. And you will find that decoders, uh, like the one I showed you the other day, the DH142, this is the little sheet that came with it, and it says right here that it is rated at one and a half amps continuous, two amps peak. And that means, you know, when it's fully slipping, it can rate, you can take that one and a half amp for quite a while. And, you know, when the locomotive uh, stalls and this locks up, then it can take two amps peak. And, you know, most decoders made today are rated at one to one and a half amps continuous, two amps peak. Uh, there are a few, like the Loke Sound Micro, that is still only rated at three quarters of an amp. And so you got to watch that one when you're installing it. I think that the Economy decoders are rated at one to two amps. So you just have to look at the literature on each decoder before you, uh, when you're making a decision as to what decoder to install in a locomotive. Okay, so... Um, let, me, let me go into a little bit more depth on stalls then. You can have that slipping, that uh, current draw when it's uh, fully slipping and pulling a hard, large uh, uh, amperage. And then you can have one where it's called the locked rotor. And that's when, for some reason, the motor is totally locked up and is not turning at all. And in that condition, uh, it can draw an even larger amperage. Okay. Uh, and, and what does that mean in terms of um, either the motor or the decoder? Some uh, decoders can take, you know, one, one and a half amps are continuous and two amps peak or even more. So that's something that's important to know. You want something where your, your um, current demand when it's locked is going to be greater than what the, uh, what the motor is pulling. Okay. So how do you know then what the locked rotor stall current is or the, the current when the wheels are freely slipping? Well, the easiest way, um, for some people anyway, is to go ahead and dig out your model railroader collection for the last 20 or 30 years 
and find a product review of a locomotive that you're planning to install a decoder in. Because all of those product reviews, Model Railroader has been uh, providing the, uh, a table showing the amperage across a speed range all the way up to when the wheels are spinning. They also uh, have been providing a full stall current so that you can get that directly from Model Railroader. Now, if you don't belong to a club that has a big collection or your local library doesn't have one, uh, another option is Model Railroader has an online um, MR archive where you can, uh, for a subscription price, uh, you can you know, uh, um, have access to online uh, the entire Model Railroader collection. So you can look up any of, you can do a search and look up any uh, locomotive that you might be uh, anticipating putting a decoder in and find out what they measured as being the stall current. Another option is uh, they sell uh, um, uh, collections of Model Railroader on uh, disk that you can purchase and you know install on your computer and look up and view anytime you want. And those are great resources. Um, however, even if you go to Model Railroader and see what the rated stall current of a decoder or, or of a motor is, that's no guarantee that that's what you're going to be purchasing. Why? Uh, because manufacturers make mistakes, okay? When Lifelike first produced the Proto 2000 PA locomotives, you know, it's basically the same locomotive that Walther's is now selling, um, the first batch were great. They had that nice flat can motor in them that uh, pulled about half an amp spinning and, you know, somewhere between half and three quarters of an amp when stalled. Then the second batch came out, and I know this because I own two of those. And when that second batch came out, those suckers would pull over an amp right out of the box, and you know, you're talking over an amp to an amp and a half when they were stalled. Uh, what had happened was, uh, someone in China at the factory, they had uh, turned out a batch of motors that were wound incorrectly. And so the stall current was very high on those. So. I ended up having to replace those motors with a couple of Mishima can motors, and they run great now, um, just as well as the ones that came with good motors. So, you know, that's one reason you can't always go based on the product reviews that you see. And why is also that important? And another reason, if you call in to tech support with a bad uh, decoder or having problems with a decoder, one of the first things they're likely to ask you is, did you measure the stall current before you installed that decoder? And if you say no, they're going to give you a hard time. How do I know that? It happened to me within the last year. Okay. Um, basically, though, you know, there, it, there are ways, though, for you to measure the stall current. And so, you know, I've given you an idea of what one is, what a stall current is, and I've talked about uh, why uh, they're important to you. Now, how can you get a locked rotor stall current, though? Well, I told you, you know, you can have a spinning uh, stall current uh, in normal operations. But let's say you've got a, a, a diesel locomotive and, you know, a gear breaks or, or cracks or something like that, a tooth pops off, and everything jams up inside the, the uh, truck. Well, that motor will suddenly come to a dead stop. And that's called a locked rotor stall current because as soon as that motor comes to a stop, you're still pushing electrons through there, lickety split, and you know that can be a problem because the, the uh, stall current is going to go through the roof and it's going to max out. And at that point, several things can happen. First, you can let the smoke out of your decoder and pay the price on that one. Also, under the right conditions, if you let it sit too long uh, on, with some motors, uh, it's actually possible to demagnetize the permanent magnet in the uh, motor itself. Also, these windings here, these you know copper wires on the motor, they are coated with old ones lacquer and with more modern ones with uh, clear vinyl. And the heat created by electrons flowing through these coils can build up enough when it's sitting there stalled that it can melt the insulation on those wires. And then if that insulation melts, then you can have a dead short and actually burn out some of these windings and destroy the motor in the process, and your decoder, by, by the way. So that's why you need to be concerned about it. Okay, so what is a good, safe, 
an easy way to measure the stall current um, of a locomotive that you're planning on installing a decoder in. Well, in my video on uh, using voltmeters and multimeters, I quickly showed how to do that. But what I want to do now is go through it step by step and with the details of how that works. So let me set up the camera so I can zoom in here on the workbench and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at how to measure a, uh, a stall current. Now I know I showed you in my video on how to use a multimeter, uh, how to, to uh, uh, do a stall current, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, I cover all the details um, a little bit better than I did in that one, take you through it step by step. Okay, so I uh, dug out another power pack, MRC 260 Tech 4 unit, and this particular one has a little bit higher amperage rating, so we'll get a better um, uh, measurement than that lower power unit I was using in that video. Okay, I've got two wires here attached to the screw terminals, one red and one gray, and that's the variable DC uh, output from the uh, power pack. And we can control that with the knob here. Okay, so now I have the red wire coming out of the back that goes directly to the piece of track. The other wire is going out, going to the uh, voltmeter, and then the black wire coming out goes around and is attached to the, the other uh, piece of rail. Okay, on this piece of track. So we're running a current out through the voltmeter and back. I've got it set on amps and I've got it set for 10 amps. So we'll be able to get a good, good reading out of this. So what I want to do now is just show you. I'm going to start increasing the uh, throttle output on the uh, power pack and increase the flow of electrons through the motor. And what you're going to see is it's going to start to creep up here. Okay, we're going up fast, one, you know, up to half an amp, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And we're maxing out, you know, somewhere about 8.5, between 0.8 and 0.9. You can see it stabilizes at times lower. Okay, let me turn that off. So, that was the full slipping uh, current that it's drawing. Now, something like that, you know, it's, it's probably going to be okay for uh, a lot of decoders. Uh, it's going to be on the edge for something like the, uh, the Loke Sound Micro that uh, is only rated about three quarters of an amp. You know, it's probably going to be okay, but I, you know, don't press it. Don't overdo it and uh, don't put it in a, in a location in the locomotive where heat might build up. Okay, so now let's go ahead and crank it all the way up again. And then I'm going to do the locked rotor. And watch what happens here. We're going to go from, what, 0.8 to 1.4 amps. Okay. I took that off very quickly because I didn't want to burn out the motor. So as you can see now, we've got a full stall, locked rotor stall current on this uh, particular older Atlas S2 switcher of about 1.4 to 1.5 amps. So that... Um, that uh, DH142 decoder that I showed you, um, you know, that would be okay with this. It could, it could take a, a full stall current, current up to 2 amps. But this is not a, a very efficient type of motor. And if I were going to use this on my layout, I would think about, uh, you know, replacing it. Right now I keep this as a parts locomotive for my other S2 switchers. Anytime you do a stall current like this, only do it long enough to where you can read what the current measurement is and then turn the power pack off or lift the motor very quickly. Don't let it sit there with the locked rotor uh, situation uh, very long because like I said, you, you, re you really run the risk of damaging the motor either uh, primarily through damaging the, the uh, insulation on the windings. Uh, it's, it's unlikely that you're going to be burning through any wires uh, directly it's more likely you're going to melt uh, the insulation and create a short internally in there. So those are the things that you have to be aware of. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward procedure. And, you know, if you uh, want to see a diagram of it, go ahead, download the Soundtracks Steam or Diesel uh, Decoder uh, Economy or Tsunami Installation Guide. They have a diagram and full instructions telling you exactly how to do what I just showed you how to do. And they will ask you if you call in whether or not you've done a stall current measurement 
uh, on that locomotive. So, you know, be ready up front and do your homework. Make your stall current measurements up front. It's fairly straightforward and easy to do if you have a power pack or transformer rated high enough uh, amperage to be able to uh, sustain the draw that you're going to get under a full stall with one of these motors. And be aware that if you get something like O scale or LGB or some of these old steam locom uh, brass locomotives with the old Pittman open frame motors, those things can draw a lot of current. So be ready for it. Please, you know, pay attention to stall currents and uh, when you're getting ready to install a decoder. And, you know, if you get something like this where a locked rotor condition occurs with a diesel or a steam loco, get it off the track fast or kill the power to the track because you don't want to burn out your decoder or your motor. So have a good week. We'll see you again on Friday.